The Khao Kha area of Pechabun province is known as Little Switzerland. But high up in this alpine terrain, we found something uniquely Thai, a new temple steeped in mystical tradition. Pa Son Gel was founded after villagers claimed they saw a crystal ball floating across the sky and into a cave near the top of a cliff. Whether that's literally true or not, this is a perfect environment for a meditation retreat. Buddhists believe suffering comes from attachment to people, one's own body, possessions, status and many other things that are inherently impermanent. They're constantly arising and passing away. As an intellectual concept, that's easy, but it's more difficult to actually see and experience that truth. And that's where meditation can help, especially in a beautiful, peaceful place like this. Many of Thailand's temples date back centuries, but this one is a recent model. Construction started in 2004 and was completed in 2010. The result is a modern masterpiece of traditional architecture and craftsmanship. This type of porcelain is known as Benjarong and it's incredibly labor intensive. Every single piece goes back into the kiln after the painstaking application of each separate color. The technique was designed for the royal court in the 18th and 19th centuries and provides the finishing touch to the majestic Pa Son Gael Temple. Pechabun province wasn't always such a peaceful place. In the 1970s, what is now Puhin Rongkla National Park was the battleground between the Royal Thai Army and the Communist People's Liberation Army of Thailand, which was joined by student activists from Bangkok and local villagers from the Mong Hill Tribe fighting for land rights. After the war finished in the 1980s, many of the ethnic Hmong who fought with the Communist Party of Thailand against the military government in Bangkok up in the hills moved down here to Kek Noi, the biggest Hmong village in Thailand. At the village entrance, an exhibition displays photographs and uniforms from the armed rebellion. On those days, the Hmong people, they have fighting with the with the government, with the, with the government. Right. Yes, on, on those days. And we, this is the traditional uniform that you used to wear? Yeah, yeah, this is the, the, the uniform for the top of town. Yeah. And many people in this village yeah, yeah. used to fight with the communists up in the mountains? Yeah, yeah, on those days, more people. This is the, the evidence can show. Okay. They carry the gun and and they try to fight for some some liberty, some liberty, liberty. some democracy. Right. These days there's peace, but not much quiet. We arrived at Kek Noi during Hmong New Year, the perfect time to admire the traditions of a people who trace their origins in southern China back to the third century BC. Mong New Year marks the end of the rice harvest and is also a kind of Thanksgiving holiday. It's a time to say thank you to ancestors, to worship spirits and to call back wandering souls of family members. It's also an opportunity to dress up in traditional Hmong finery and enjoy some serious fun and games like Yun Luk Chuang the traditional version of a Hmong dating game. The rules are, you can only toss the ball with a member of a different clan, and if you drop it, you have to give an ornament to your partner, which you can only get back by singing a love song. Fortunately for all, I held on a spiritual high and a serious party, the multicultural delights of Pechabun province.